Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're playing GTA 5 Enhanced on the RTX 30 56 gig. I recently picked up this gigabyte low profile version of the card. Requires no external power whatsoever. It's great for low profile systems. It came with a low profile bracket in the box as well. We'll be doing a full test soon but first I wanted to see how it handles the updated version of GTA. So you may have noticed the footage looked a bit stuttery there. That's because we've basically maxed everything out to start with. We're running on the highest settings with the highest ray tracing settings as well. We've started off at 1080p. The only thing I've turned off here as a matter of personal preference is the depth of field and motion blur options, or at least we will turn those down. Oh no, I've done it already. Excellent. In the game then at 1080p and yeah, we've basically run out of VRAM straight away. All six gigs being utilized. We're seeing about 22, 23 FPS. Let's get in the car here, make our way into the city and see if things pick up a little bit. All right, so we're getting around 25 now. Still not what I would really call playable unless you're looking for a cinematic 24 FPS experience of course, but uh, not really an ideal way to play uh, this version of the game. And of course, the original or legacy version is still available. So for those of you with older or weaker hardware, that may be a better bet. Oh, 30 FPS just then. In general, yeah, this is not playable uh, with the highest options on the 6 gig 3050 which I think was to be expected in all fairness so what we'll do now is jump back into the graphical options uh, we'll enable DLSS performance mode I'm running DLAA now we can use TAA which is the, the, the default method stumbling over my words here but it does look quite blurry even with the sharpness turned up and DLAA doesn't actually knock that much performance off uh, at native just then it's like one or two FPS so it still wasn't playable with TAA. When we enable DLSS performance we're getting a nice boost to over 40 FPS and if you want to max out the settings DLSS performance is really the only option in order to get a consistently playable frame rate in my opinion. Any lower than this for example balanced and you're still going to see quite a few drops below 30 or at least I did with this hardware configuration. I paired the 6 gig 3050 with a 12 400 F and 32 gigs of 3200 megahertz DDR4 so nothing special but this is the sort of system I think you'd um, likely pair with a 6 gig 3050. A nice modern budget setup. Of course check out the prices of the 8 gig 3050s on the used market too because they will perform better than this but let's change the settings now so we're going to drop the ray tracing options we're currently using everything at its highest settings as you can see all the RT options are on and set to ultra we'll just change DLSS back to DLAA so native 1080p resolution we'll keep everything else the same here as you can see but when it comes to the upscaling option we'll actually change this now no sorry the RT options what am I talking about we'll change these to high so everything has gone from its respective highest to just high what's happened here eight frames per second all right now I believe we should be seeing a higher frame rate than before <laughs> this is quite weird not sure why this is happening okay we'll restart the game we'll jump back in and see if this helped things We'll, we'll keep the settings the same, of course. Okay, so here we are, back with the highest in-game settings, bar ray tracing, uh, all of which, uh, the options, all of which are set to high instead. Now, before we were getting 8 FPS, these are the same settings as you saw just now, by the way, uh, but instead of 8 FPS, we're getting at least 50 FPS, so I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> I just restarted the game and it seemed to fix things. I am using the latest version of the NVIDIA driver at the time of this video, which is 576.28. The 3056 gig I think is an okay modern card for the right price, and it's certainly a decent option for those low profile systems. If you want to upgrade an old Dell desktop, for example, you can buy one of these, slot it in, you don't need external power, and it's probably going to help turn an old office machine into something a lot more capable. You can see a few dips and drops below 40 frames per second here, but I don't think this is a bad way to play if you're looking to 
almost maximize the visuals, but you still want at least 30 FPS. Of course, we will be targeting 60 FPS uh, in the next set of gameplay tests because I feel like that is definitely what more people would want. I'd certainly like to see 60 frames per second from this card, especially as we have a first person mode. So that's gonna feel a lot better at a higher frame rate. Making our way downtown now, as you can see, things are still holding pretty steady, but we will jump into the settings. We'll enable um, performance DLSS mode like we did just now and see if we can hit at least 60 frames per second. We'll keep everything else the same. How's that impacting frame rate? Oh, okay, yeah, so we're getting at least 60 FPS with the highest settings, uh, the RT options set to high, and then DLSS performance mode. At 1080p, you can certainly notice that DLSS is enabled, that's for sure. A few little jagged edges and shimmering around certain objects here, which is to be expected, especially when enabling such an aggressive form of DLSS at this resolution. I'm gonna crash any second now, I just know it, cars wobbling all over the place. Let's try and get through the town without hitting anything else. Oh, lovely, lovely job. Whoa, traffic's coming up. Don't wanna crash into the cop cars. There we go. We are dipping towards the low 60s now, but oh dear, we're gonna crash. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm surprised, oh, sorry. Did we avoid him? No, we just ran him over last minute. Sorry about that, sir. What I want to do now then is actually select the settings that I'd probably suggest. Now, it doesn't make much sense just trying to max out this game and uh, aiming for 60 FPS if we have to enable an aggressive form of DLSS. I don't think any way we can do it and hit it, as you saw just then, DLSS performance, but I prefer to play with the high RT preset. We're gonna leave everything at default for now, including DLAA, so native 1080p. This is the high RT preset, so some of those ray tracing effects are turned on. Uh, RTGI, or Ray Trace Global Illumination, is not on. That's where you're going to notice quite a bit of graphical difference, but we'll enable that shortly. Without it though, with the high RT preset, and at native resolution, the game looks pretty good, and we're seeing 60 FPS at 1080p, with the 30, 50, 6 gig straight away with no other changes. This is a nice, simple way to play, just jump in the game with a 30, 50, 6 gig, hit the high RT preset option, and away you go with plus 60 frames per second. No issues really to speak of here. You may notice a few dips and drops toward the low 60s, possibly below in certain areas, but for the most part, I think this is a nice combination of decent visuals, warp, and performance. Surprised we didn't hit anything there, how I got through that gap without smashing my car up, I do not know. So yeah, this is certainly one option uh, to use, one that's gonna give you a decent combination of visuals and FPS. Oh, we've lost control now. What we're gonna do then is actually switch RTGI or Ray Trace Global Illuminations on, because as I said, this certainly makes the game uh, look better. In my opinion, this is one of those options where you enable it and you immediately notice the difference, but it does come at a cost of performance. Let's just uh, finish causing chaos in the streets here before pausing. Uh, right now, we'll actually enable it. So we'll jump back into the graphical menu here. You can see we're pretty close to that VRAM limitation as it is. Ray Trace Global Illumination is being enabled now. With the high settings, we can go higher, but I'm not gonna risk a lower frame rate here. This should still give us at least 60 FPS. Right, oh, we're still getting at least 70 FPS, a dip then below 60 with that explosion on screen, uh, but the game certainly looks better for it. So the high RT preset with RTGI on and set to high as well, gives us a nice combination or a recommended uh, combination of performance and visuals in my opinion. These are certainly the settings I would use. I might be inclined to enable some form of upscaling as well, DLSS and set to quality mode perhaps, but we will test that shortly. Right now though at native res, you're gonna see plus 60 most of the time with high RT and RTGI set to high as well. This is certainly an option you're gonna want in order to take advantage of the new and improved GTA 5 visuals here. Yeah, all right, let's just go down here. The frame rate's gonna pick up, or at least I thought it would, around this area, because there's not much going on. If anything, though, it's actually dropped us a little bit. Might be the water and uh, foliage uh, in the background there. 
I do like the way this game looks. I think GTA 5, the original or legacy version, still holds up, to be honest. I am really looking forward to GTA 6. You might not see me for a while when it comes out because I'm just going to be glued to that PlayStation uh, for a very long time, I think. But let's turn DLSS on momentarily after we've just uh, blown this car up and see how performance changes. All right, so I don't know what happened here, uh, everyone. I've uh, just uh, loaded outside the hospital. Well, you can imagine I ran along with a grenade in my hand and held it too long, I didn't realize. So we're going to remain with the same settings here, but this time we're gonna switch DLSS on. I haven't used any overrides from within the NVIDIA control panel. This is the default version of DLSS that the game comes with. Set to quality mode, it's gonna look pretty good, to be honest. Um, it will be noticeable in some areas that it is enabled, but I think for the increase in performance, it's well worth the trade-off. And as you can see, we've gone from hovering around 65, 70 FPS, the exact averages will be up on the screen, as always, uh, to the low 80s, low 90s as well. And I think this is definitely worth enabling here, as it's going to give you a higher frame rate at a small uh, resolution cost or a small cost to the overall crispness of the game the 3056 gig certainly handling gta 5 enhanced quite well at 1080p though and uh, these are certainly my recommended settings we'll just give it a bit of a blast through traffic here trying not to hit anyone as per usual Ooh, right yeah so in a moment we'll switch to a high resolution i think 1440p probably won't test sorry probably won't test a 4k today i don't think that's a sensible option for the 30 56 gig i did come in here to try and look for a nicer car but it doesn't seem like we have many parked up here can we steal anything interesting oh a golf caddy <laughs> award for the most overly dramatic dive in the background there <laughs> sorry madam didn't mean to do that yeah 1080p i think with the high preset rtgi on and set to high as well along with dlss quality is going to give you that perfect blend of uh, visuals and performance on the 6 gig 30 50. In terms of the actual card itself, this low profile version, I do like it, but the fans are constantly spinning and I can hear them. It's not inaudible, as some people told me it would be. The fans are always on and spinning, um, but it does stay relatively cool, to be honest. And it doesn't get that much louder when actually playing games, which is nice. As part of a small compact system, I think it's going to work really well. And as I said before, it's a great choice for upgrading an old desktop or office machine but we'll be doing some more testing with that card in a few more games soon so we're going to keep the same settings now but this time we've bumped the resolution up to 2560 by 1440 everything else remains the same so we're talking the high rt preset with rtgr or ray trace global illumination set to high as well dlss is however set to balanced this time around instead of quality because i feel like that is what we probably need in order to hit at least 60 fps just a hunch and as you can see, yeah, we're hovering around 60 frames per second. The average may come in slightly higher than that. Look at that beautiful sunset. We're running at least 60 frames per second with 1440p balanced DLSS mode, and it still looks pretty good in my opinion. We can also drop the DLSS mode to performance, which I will do momentarily, mate. There was absolutely no need to reverse over me. I've just come out of the hospital and you've decided to squash me. Right, for that, I'm going to take your car, buddy. Out you get. Okay, so currently still 1440p balanced here as we make our way through town. I'm going to pull over or just stop in the middle of the road, switch to DLSS performance at 1440p, which is still going to look half decent. I have tested this before on other hardware. Performance DLSS mode at 1440p actually looks rather respectable and as you can see here or i hope you can see here after compression and whatnot it doesn't look too bad at all and it does boost our frame rate up a little bit there aren't as many dips to the low 60s or high 50s as there was before personally i prefer to stick to 1080p but if you are using a high resolution display then 2560 by 1440 with dlss performance mode and the high rt settings along with high rtgi is going to give you a nice overall balance between performance and visuals and I've almost thrown a grenade at the tree and blown myself up there. 
Oh, and again, <laughs> as for this one then, I think we'll call it a day there. The RTX 3050 6 gig in GTA 5, it handles it pretty well with half decent settings. So thanks for watching as always, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.